before we proceed ahead with uh, uh, understanding the type of interaction that uh, electromagnetic radiation has with the material, let us quickly uh, recognize you know we, we had this chart uh, or, the, or this uh, uh, figure that showed the whole range of electromagnetic spectrum uh, you know uh, and uh, some aspect of where it can be used was listed there but it does not hurt us to just review one more time. In the spectrum actually you see that we are in, in this specific mod uh, medical imaging systems right in this particular course or in this area what part of uh, electromagnetic spectrum is used and you will see that it is actually exploiting you know from your radio frequency wave to uh, high energy right you have gamma ok. So, let us quickly look at that one more time before we start to talk about the interactions and that is a, there is a reason why I wanted to do this uh, because first and foremost the x-rays and gamma rays right if you look at the uh, electromagnetic spectrum right after the visible light as the energy increases you see that we will exploit x-rays and gamma rays in the modalities of x-ray CT in the first uh, part and then later in the nuclear medicine right. So, we will use x-rays and gamma rays. So, these are high energy in kilo electron uh, volts to mega electron volts and these are ionizing radiation. So, uh, that is the reason we said we could think about the imaging medical imaging systems as based on ionizing or non-ionizing right. Non-ionizing we talked about MRI and ultrasound remember. So, now ok so that high energy part the ionizing part we know where we are going to use and then on the lower side if you see you have your radio waves right which modality uses radio waves right imaging system well radio waves are used in MRI oh we said that it is a uh, uh, MRI is to do with some magnetic resonance uh, what does uh, radio frequency right radio waves have why is it used? Well, it turns out to stimulate the nuclei right to spin one way and then to record the response. So, when you stimulate it you again get another electromagnetic. So, you get another radio frequency. So, radio frequency uh, is heavily used in MRI both to stimulate and uh, receive the response ok. Um, then of course, visible light, visible light I mean apart from the intuitive thing right in medical imaging system you want some uh, radiologist or, or a, a practicing doctor to look at the image. So, you know visible light is useful right it is used in medical image. In fact, all the modality all the energy all the different imaging system in the end your output is going to be in the visible range right. But beyond that what do we mean? Oh we mean that it is actually used when you have uh, again recall what uh, Royngen did right he named it as x-rays because there was mysterious rays that were coming. He was working with Crookes tube and uh, so he noticed that the photographic film actually got spoiled due to some mysterious rays. So, he named it as x-rays. So, clearly x-ray can uh, spoil a photography film, but to capture x-rays that means to detect x-rays you know by itself it is ineff inefficient and therefore, in order to improve the efficiency you will exploit the visible light photons ok photons in the visible light region. So, we will look at. So, so much is clear. So, you can actually look at the different variety of electromagnetic radiation that will be involved that will have interaction with the body ok. Uh, one thing to appreciate before we jump in therefore, if you look at this from tech strict point of electromagnetic radiation interaction with body right. It does not really matter whether it is uh, K uh, you know whether it is uh, x rays or gamma rays both are ionizing both have higher energy here. So, from the point of view of if you have to understand the interaction of the energies which is in this range with the tissue probably that is fine there is not much distinction, but where the where the 
distinction between the different modality comes into picture is the origin of this energy. So, in X rays, where is the origin? We just saw, right? Bremsstrahl lung and characteristic. Whereas gamma is due to so or 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 in other words, it is from the electron cloud. Whereas gamma rays comes from the nuclear radioactivity from the nucleus. Remember, so the point of origin is different for both the signals, both the energies. That is the difference. Otherwise, their interaction is nothing but oh, it's a photon with that energy. It is going to interact with the material. Okay, so the creation is the difference. How you get this X-ray? How you generate this X-ray? How you generate gamma rays? That is different. But once it is generated, how it ion, how it interacts with the body, the ionization, all that, whatever we are going to cover now for X-rays specifically. Most of it can be borrowed, right? Similar interaction happens uh, for gamma rays as well. So, we will defer gamma rays and the details of that when we get to nuclear medicine. For now, we will talk about X ray interaction with the tissue because that is what is important for us. Okay, so what are the I mean, there are several levels of interactions you could talk about. Broadly, there are three interactions of interest like you see here one is photoelectric another is Compton scattering all of these are um, uh, you know we'll go into the details and then there is pair production so these are some of the common three main types of interaction in, in fact going forward we'll rule out uh, rule out the last one pair production so these are all interaction of electromagnetic radiation with material. So, you will have pair production, but to have pair production, it requires high energy, requires at least 1.02 mega electric volt. So, this one, given that we are going to deal with our X-ray imaging system or even you know gamma rays, we are not going to really go beyond this range, like kilo electron volts, hundreds of kilo electron volts. And therefore, for our purposes, right? For practical purposes in medical imaging, we will not be bothered about pair production. Therefore, we will not cover this anymore. This is just for the completeness. There are three types of interactions. For biomedical application, we do not really worry about pair production. We just leave it at this stage and say that is not going to be encountered because of the high energy of the incident photon that is needed. Okay, So, now we will jump into the two other things. So, what is photoelectric effect? right? In some sense before, because there are going to be several key uh, names, unique names that come out. Uh, right? But before you get that, if you really look at it, what we have covered, right? what we covered is particulate interaction with the material. So, there we talked about roughly two things. One is the electron kicking out and then characteristic coming in, characteristic radiation coming out. The other is the electron with energy goes near the nucleus, right? but then it does not get annihilated and changes path reduced energy. And that difference in energy comes out as again X-ray Bremsstrahl lung radiation. <coughs> so, now what is different? Oh, difference is, is not a particulate that is carrying energy. Now, you have a, a photon with that energy. So, what are the uh, guess that we can make already? Material is material. Now, instead of uh, a particle that is coming in, I have some energy coming in. So, what can happen? Oh, the same energy can do similar thing, right? The same energy can come in and then perhaps it can knock out the K shell electron, right? And then, oh, after it excites or ionizes, you have characteristic radiation. That could that is one possibility. The other possibility, the energy is coming, right? The photon energy is coming. Maybe it bumps off the outer. It doesn't really get into the core. It just knocks off something, right? At the outer electron shell. In which case, what will happen? Oh, it will just knock that out, reduce the energy, it will just go in a new direction. 
intuitively this is very similar to what we did for uh, charged elect i mean high energy uh, particulate right electron that is coming in an interaction with the matter similar thing happens here so incoming photon in photoelectric effect incoming photon is completely absorbed by the atom that energy is absorbed and then that energy when the atom is absorbed that energy if it has greater than the binding energy it will kick the k electron out when it kicks that or even l and then there is going to be characteristic x ray produced again that is a that characteristic x ray is also going to be a electromagnetic radiation okay but of obviously you can guess that it is going to be probably of a lower energy right that much is straightforward so if it is compton scattering as the name suggests at least this name suggests scatter means directional something to do with bouncing off in different directions that's why it is scatter right so the incoming photon changes its direction so it loses energy and changes direction so let's go one step at a time let's talk little bit more on the photoelectric effect first and then we will uh, talk about compton scattering and then try to uh, compare these two and make a, a final uh, you know take home message of what is favorable what is unfavorable what is needed what we need to maximize what uh, which effect we need to minimize all that we will summarize okay so as we talk just now an incoming photon interacts with the so look, think about it this way you have an atom right so it has a core nucleus and then it has electron cloud h mu comes in that comes in with x ray energy when it comes in it interacts with the coulomb field the electron electrical field that is there the electron field that is there when it interacts what that that what does that mean is it is losing energy so in fact it, the whole of h mu is absorbed by this atom in this field okay once that field gets that energy if it has energy greater than the binding energy of k or l shell that electron is going to go out that electron is called as photo electron because you have photo electric effect so this electron is coming out because of photo electric effect this electron is called as photo electron this photo electron can do what we studied before right that's a electron which has energy so particulate it can go subsequently do whatever interactions we already covered for particulate right so that is one thing so the atom is completely absorbs incident photon and all energy is transferred so now after the photo electron leaves what will happen oh this has to rearrange right all the electrons now will rearrange because there is a hole in k shell that electron has left so there is going to be realignment exactly similar to what we covered already right so the photo uh, so rearrangement will take place but the photon electron right the photo electron that propagates it went with a energy what is that energy h mu it came in this is your binding energy so whatever is came in minus the binding energy is the energy with which that photo electron is going out clear so after the after the affected after that what happens the affected atom comes back to its ground state when it tries to comes to its ground state it releases energy and that energy right is in the x ray range and we talked about why it is characteristic x ray right depending on which electron which shell is migrating in the rearrangement pattern okay so that is your characteristic x ray so now you have of course characteristic x ray will also be of lower energy right so now you have both photo electron that can go and cause subsequent interaction and x ray characteristic x ray that can also interact further clear so very similar to what we did uh, in the particulate right so here also what can happen is this characteristic x ray that is coming out right that characteristic x ray on its way out from the atom 
can probably kick out the outermost atom or or the the electron in the outermost shell so you have a characteristic x ray that is produced in the photoelectric effect that characteristic x ray energy that is when the photons with that is trying to leave the atom right coming out from the atom it may probably knock off the electron in the outermost shell because outermost shell you know the binding energy is going to be less right so it is going to be weak so maybe it has sufficient energy to kick that atom so sometimes the characteristic x ray transfers this energy to the outer electron so what happens then oh then this electron gets that energy and it can move right so it is an electron charged particle right electron that is going to move take some energy with it so this kind of electron is called auger electron so the interaction is going to be same electron with some energy it is going to interact with the material like we discussed so whether it is photo electron or auger electron their interaction with the material is going to be exactly same as what we already covered with particulate interaction only thing is now even when we have a electromagnetic radiation carrying x ray that is interacting with tissue you can get these particulate radiations so here it is called as auger electron so essentially both auger electron and photo electrons can interact with the matter in ways that we already covered right okay so that is good so now what we need to do okay photoelectric effect seems to make sense let's just complete it with a picture this is kind of a review right text sometimes might be boring so just quickly to review so you have a incident photon hmu some energy is coming in the x ray range this is your nucleus and these are your electron cloud so it knocks off right it basically the full incident photon gets absorbed completely by the atom in this field and then it has enough energy greater than your k shell then the k electron the electron in the k shell will be knocked out right but it is given a name called photo electron because of the process with which this electron was generated so once that happens you know excited state right this is ionized so it will basically now try to come back to ground state by rearrangement of the electrons from outer shell to inner shell and that gives you your characteristic radiation similarly if you have the incident photon exactly do what we did here so much is so good but in addition if this characteristic radiation right when it is coming out if it knocks out another electron on its way of the same atom in the outer shell then that electron is called as your auger electron clear after that auger electron or photo electron are nothing but these are electrons charged particles particulates with some energy that energy it is going to interact with subsequent atoms in the manner that we already covered clear so let us use the same sketch right to also talk about the other effect which is compton scattering so here what happens incident photon comes but notice it is not going into the coulomb field right it doesn't go close here but it so happens that when it comes here it is able to hit a, a electron share some energy to that electron and kick that outer electron out, uh, you know uh, release that outer electron so when you do that the incident photon loses energy to the compton electron so it is now reduced energy and with reduced energy it after the deflection here right after kicking that here with the new energy it reflects it it scatters to a different path here in the illustration if this was the original path it is deflected by angle theta and the electron that comes out because of compton scattering is called as compton electron after that this compton electron could do the same thing however notice that the energy of the compton electron is going to be small but from a principal standpoint yes this is a 
particulate with energy that can go do subsequent interactions. So, likewise here you have Compton photon. What is Compton photon? Oh, it is still the photon, but then it is reduced energy due to Compton scattering. So, Compton photon is the incoming energy that is reduced due to Compton scattering. So, it has lost some energy right in this interactions and it is reduced and it is at a different path, different angle now. Okay. So, Compton scattering is an incoming photon ejects a valence or the outer shell electron yielding a new energetic electron called Compton electron and the incident photon is not completely absorbed by the atom. The incident photon with reduced energy it changes direction. So, it does not this is the key it is not completely absorbed by the atom and so this can essentially go you know from here if the Compton photon has enough energy it can do photoelectric effect right it's it's just that after this it proceeds clear so that is for your compton scattering so what we would like to do is just uh, before we proceed ahead let's look at this energy so because we said compton scattering it has a new angle and it is reduced the energy so is there a relationship that we can form between the incoming energy reduced that is your Compton photon energy and the angle at which it is getting reflected right. So, the energy of the scattered photon or the so called Compton photon is given by this equation. What do you see here? This is the incoming H mu right incoming photon it had a H energy H mu this is your Compton photon energy look at how these two are related there is this theta of course m naught c square you can calculate that is your rest mass of your electron right based on that you can calculate that. So, if you really look at it we know this energy is going to be less than this energy, but how much less depends on theta ok. So, intuitively speaking if there is no change in path right then H mu will have H mu dash will be same as H mu right it has there is no interaction taken place it is not lost any energy uh, and changed the path right 0 means it is not changed any path that means it probably did not interact and therefore there is no energy lost and therefore you will get the same energy. So, on, on, on a you know, uh, so thinking in that spirit, when will it have lost most energy? Oh, look at this, you have a 1 minus cos theta, so it would have lost most energy, when you have a back scatter, what we call as back scatter, 180 degree shift, right. So, when it comes back in the same direction, in that scenario, you will have back scatter when you have maximum energy loss right. So, maximum energy loss occurs when the photon is deflected I mean it is actually deflected is uh, <laughs> you know deflected means it is a small angle, but we you, you, for, for for explaining this it is like deflected, but the deflection is backwards 180 degrees. So, it is essentially a reflection it comes back in the same direction ok. So, which is called as back scatter 180 degree back scatter. Why are all these important? We need to know this because in a mo moment we will actually do that. We need to understand which phenomenon is favorable to our sin our task. What is our task? Imaging that is we want to send the x-rays into the body and the x-rays will interact with the body and I will uh, receive right the x-rays that are coming out of the body. So, it is through transmission and based on what I am detecting I should comment on what is there inside the body clear that is the objective. So, we need to now quickly understand what is favorable what phenomenon is helpful for us what is not how to use minimize the bad guy maximize the good guy right that we need to still do. So, of course, Compton angle is one thing and then what is the reduced energy? 
reduced energy is so your Compton electrons will have an energy which is incoming minus Compton photon energy that energy is given to the Compton electron okay so the kinetic energy of the Compton electron is the difference between these two so one of the ways this will be useful is like I said we want to send the the photon through the body and collect it when it comes to the other side if you have Compton scattering then what is going to happen oh it is going to take a different angle so I might sit on the detector thinking something is coming in this direction but because of the interaction with the body if it goes there right that is not going to be helpful for me because I'm not going to get it I'm not going to get the signal right I'm not going to get the photon to make any sense of what it has interacted right so Compton scattering in that sense it will be helpful right to understand even if there is a what is the angle right beyond which my detector may not detect it so anything beyond that it is only the body that is getting all this ionization but you, you, your detector will not get it because you are looking at the detector thinking it is going to come here but because of Compton scattering it is going there right. So you need to know what is an angle of this Compton scattering right until which you probably can detect even if it is at some angle it can detect but if it is greater than certain angle maybe you are not going to detect you are just going to dose the patient right he is going to have ionization but uh, you are not going to catch the photon to say you know what about the material that came through. So in scenarios like that it probably very useful to calculate this angle. So I am not going to do that here this is a simple substitution that you can do. So a typical scenario is you have a, a incoming photon right with some energy of 100 kilo electron volt and then we also say that it exits it exits from the material with a reduced energy of h mu dash so now we are also saying that the detector threshold of h mu dash so if if the uh, detected energy of h mu dash if it is greater than 98 kilo electron volt so you are sending in 100 you are receiving 98 after the photon has gone through the medium you say that if I am able to capture 98 kilo electron volt then whatever scattering has happened the angle of Compton scattering is acceptable until then you, you are okay because you are you are capturing the signal 98 kilo electron volt anything beyond that you will have to look at design aspects so the question is what could be that maximum angle if this is the scenario so I am not going to do it now because it is straightforward so you will do it what do you do you are given h mu you are given h mu dash right you are given h mu you are given h mu dash you know m naught c square you have to find out theta okay so if you do that what is the maximum angle by which the photon is scattered but still being treated as traveling in straight line path if you calculate it will turn out to be about 26.4 degrees so essentially even if it is deflected right straight line path is 0 0 degree so even if it is deflected by uh, in this case about 26.4 degree you will still be able to catch the photon in the detector when it is coming through so you can say that it came through the straight line anything greater than that probably is not going to be helpful from your signal detection point of view okay so now let us just uh, compare the two effects right what do I mean by compare the two effects see you do not have control over any of this it is all statistics right population based so you send some energy remember when I say send some energy h mu that h mu is not like discrete that you can so it is coming from x-ray tube and we saw in the previous lecture basically you get Brahm's straw lung you get a, a population right so you have different energies that come 
in fact sometimes you also have characteristic excess energy that is coming in so you have a host of different energies that are coming in so different h mu's that are coming in so in that sense different h mu's are coming different energy levels are coming it has to interact with the body so there are two prominent interactions that we are worried about one is compton the other is photoelectric which one does what what is you know which condition favors uh, or which factors favor each of the effects and which effect are we interested in what is our task right that is what we want to do here when we compare so photoelectric effect helps to differentiate different human tissue organs what does that mean why is that statement made okay so the idea is this right you are sending an energy it is going through it is i'm i'm just using uh, simple chest x ray kind of example that you are probably familiar similar concept works for ct as well so le, le, right uh, so we will not complicate uh, that so simple chest x ray that you are familiar you went and stood in front of x ray tube X-ray photons came in, and behind you there was a detector. So that was detecting the X-rays that come out. So what does photoelectric uh, effect do? That means you have energy that is coming in. The energy is now deposited in the tissue, and the remaining energy comes out. So it is the relative distribution of which location can stop. how much x ray that is what you see as the image in your x ray right so in that sense photoelectric effect what does it do oh photoelectric effect the energy is absorbed by the material so different material can have different for the same energy that is going in different material can have a different level of uh um absorption loss in the signal i am not using the word uh, attenuation yet right just to give a feel so it is you have a energy that is reduced so it depending on the material the amount of reduction will take so the remaining will come out so it's this differential material ability different material has different ability to uh, have this photoelectric effect right absorb the energy to different extents that is what you want to map so you want to maximize photoelectric effect so if there is no interaction whatever you send whatever comes out then you are not going to tell anything about the medium right or other extreme i send everything and everything is lost inside i don't get anything outside then also you cannot really comment about because your output is zero right so you cannot really tell what is there inside the body so there is uh, this idea that photoelectric effect helps because of this differential uh, attenuation by the tissue materials to the uh, uh, x ray energy this photoelectric effect which basically says that the photon is going to interact with the tissue the material the you know the cloud that is going to be helpful factor for us right that is going to be our clue signal how does it interact with the material if it interacts with the material then by measuring that signal i can comment about the material that, right so that is a f- a photoelectric effect helps in that then what about compton scattering compton scattering as we already talked about right scattering causes incident photon to go into a different direction so it deviates from the straight line path so in some sense it is unnecessary exposure will be happening in the sense that i send the f- f- photons it does compton compton scattering so i am thinking i'm going to get the uh, photon energy through my body to the other side whereas it got deflected inside the body it, it goes all over the body and exits the body from some other angle then although all the interaction absorption ionization everything took place i am not able to even catch the signal right if i don't catch the signal i cannot really get anything about the tissue or the material so essentially you would have irradiated the tissue with x ray energy but that energy interaction with the tissue that signal is not coming out that signal is scattered everywhere 
so that is what we mean by exposure of x-ray to untargeted areas so no it may go into other direction and cause some ionization in some other organ okay so that is a so in some sense you can look at it this is the signal that we are interested this is a effect that doesn't contribute to our signal in fact it contributes to difficulties right so this signal is kind of your noise okay so in medical imaging we would like to increase the likelihood of photoelectric effect while minimizing compton scattering a very important we should know what we are going after okay so in in some sense it is uh, um very intuitive right so let's take an example how do i engineer this right and now that we have this knowledge how do i exploit it i mean the simplest case let me tell you what happens if i know how to increase the likelihood of photoelectric events what does that mean oh i want the photons to get absorbed by the coulomb cloud the atom cloud right so what happens if i what happens if i uh, say look i want to increase it increase the probability so that it actually is completely absorbed by the material that is nothing comes out oh from a medical imaging point of view we might not favor that because we need something to come but then if you actually cleverly look at it oh maybe there is a way in which if i am the pay, i am I, i don't want to be affected by the ionizing radiation then i can have a material in front of me which maximizes photoelectric effect to the extent that all the end, the x radiations that ionizing radiations that come right get absorbed in the material that is placed in front of me that way i won't get any radiation right so i mean it's just knowledge so if you if you know that that's why if you go to a uh scan room right uh, operator who is going to do all that he'll have safety because you are gone there to take a chest x ray he doesn't want to get exposed to ionizing radiation that he sits in another room is one thing but even then you will see that they will put some jacket lead jacket why oh because they want this energy to get absorbed by that lead jacket they don't want to get ionized it, they don't want this ionization to go to their soft tissue likewise minimizing compton scattering if you know how to minimize compton scattering that is beneficial like just the example that we saw the, the angles are coming so we can calculate either how, how to minimize the compton scattering because from perspective of dose is one thing the other perspective is also giving contributing to the noise okay because i am probably looking at some signal coming straight through right so i'm 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 looking at my detector is looking at some hmu that's supposed to come straight through whereas now that is my signal of interest but now because of compton scattering something else happened and that one comes at an angle and hits here so while i am looking at here something else came and hit me here i will not know i will say it came from here so basically this is noise this is corrupting my measurement so it is undesired right so i want to minimize that so i can then in that sense come up with schemes so that i can prevent right compton scattered photons to come so i can have some ways mechanisms through which if the signal is coming from if the photons are coming at a certain angles right i would have material so that that will uh, stop the photons hitting the detector okay so knowing this is very important because we will then strategically use this to our advantage okay so that means we'll spend a little more time on understanding what do we mean by increasing the likelihood or decreasing the likelihood right so it's all probabilistic so intuitively to think about it we are interested in photoelectric when does photoelectric uh, effect happen oh you have a energy uh, you know photon with x ray energy coming in it is interacting with the cloud of electrons is the key is it has to interact with the electron cloud or the coulomb field right so when does that happen well 
without knowing much i can say oh if the field is big right then the, i maximize the chance the field is strong then i maximize the chance so that means if i have more protons then i'm going to have equal number of electrons so more the protons more the electrons more the electron cloud so i maximize my chance right very straightforward extension of what we what we know from the definition of photoelectric effect so more likely so more likely when colliding with an atom with more protons so that means if it is a, a higher z number right then you are maximizing the chance so it's all very uh, first order rule of thumb kind of so we are not going to derive the details because these are all fields in, you know whole physics they were doing all this so we are not going to do that we are going to appreciate the the rationale of yeah photoelectric effect says it is uh, uh, you know it is interacting the energy is h mu is interacting with the coulomb field so if there are more electrons the strong field then there is a higher chance of h mu interacting okay so we will only say that you need a higher uh, z number in fact we exact order we will put but rule of thumb is directly directly proportional right which order we will talk about so what we also can guess is less likely when incident photon have higher energy why is it uh, very guessable so let's go back to our uh, uh, example like i said it's a it's a laymanish example but maybe the message will be sent so recall how we said i am the electron i have a lot of energy i am running right and there are 15 of you that they are there okay so when i go if i have lot more energy what is going to happen am i going to with relations to the people who are standing there if i have way too much energy compared to the people there i will not probably interact with them when i go through them they will all fall apart and i'll i'll proceed further when is the chance of me interacting with them oh when my energy is not so much it's greater than there so that you know i i will have some energy to give right if i don't have energy if i have energy less than theirs then probably i'll go i cannot penetrate them i'll come back but the idea is i, I am ionizing radiation so i have enough energy so i am going there so what will happen if i go there if there are many of them i will interact with them i will push them nudge them slightly right and then i will go further so there is going to be interaction the chances of interaction goes up if the energy is not way too much so if the energy is way too much i won't interact with them i'll just run through they will all fall apart i'll keep going so i won't lose much energy in that sense right so what is the fun i send some energy through it doesn't interact with the tissue it comes out what is the fun right i don't get anything from that so less likely when the incident photons have higher energy okay so you have to look at some energy level that is conducive for maximizing the probability so from a interaction perspective from a probability perspective one is directly proportional other is inversely proportional okay so the exact order is like here probability of a photoelectric event to take place depends on the fourth power of z effective so why is this z effective i talked about atom but you have some compounds some molecules so you have several different kinds of atoms perhaps so z effective is the effective average of all the uh, atoms that are there all the different types of atoms that are there h mu cube so for for tissue it is about z power 4 but if the interaction is with some material which uh, which are uh, heavy atoms then they say it is z power 3 but for our purpose we'll take that probability of photoelectric event is proportional to fourth power of z effective by h mu the energy that is incident right cube of that so lesser the energy uh, more the density of like i mean your more the atomic number then your Uh, chances are increasing okay 
beyond that there is one more detail the probability increases abruptly so this is fine but the probability increases abruptly when the photon energy raises about the binding energy so all now we said okay h mu is going in it is interacting fully absorbed right but if it turns out that this h whatever you are sending the h mu is sufficient or it is close to this binding energy just greater than your l and k then suddenly what happens is this energy is able to overcome the binding energy of the k electron right so the probability of the uh, effect taking place increases okay so the probability increases when the photon energy rises above the binding energy of k electron right because then suddenly you have many electrons that k shell electron becomes uh, right you can eject them okay and then of course after that it will start to diminish so when you when you when you have a energy such that it is close to the k shell l shell binding energy you have maximized the, the photoelectric effect so here again how do naturally probably you cannot do much right we are composed of certain material so they have characters how do you how do you maximize all this engineer all this ah that is where they do you, if you can engineer a material right if you are engineer a material so that its k shell or l shell binding energy is within the range of the diagnostic x ray energy that you are sending in if you can engineer such a material then probably the activity of that material will go up where do they engineer you look at something called as contrast agents we will not cover that here but you know sometimes uh, contrast agents are these are agents that are there to generate contrast that's why so you inject it so you have your uh, angio right when you go for they dye right you would have asked they'll inject a dye and then do a, a ct or a or a x ray right so what does it do that is a material that material is sent in which is carefully engineered so that its k shell l shell is just above the dose that uh, the 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 x ray tube uh, energy that is used in that imaging system so that when that goes in suddenly that will behave very differently compared to the rest of the tissue so that you can clearly spot where all the dye is going you will see that contrast it out compared to the rest very easily so that's why it is called as contrast agents so you will look at uh, when you do contra uh, when you do contrast agent angio you will see several uh, you know vascular uh, picture in ct those are all high contrast very clear uh, for that reason okay so that is for your uh, probability of your photoelectric effect so then what about probability of your compton scattering okay what we know is compton scattering when the energy comes in it interacts with the outer shell or interacts as in it knocks the outer shell and then reduces the energy and it goes in another direction so when can you maximize that i mean the likelihood is if you have more electrons the chances are that it encounters a electron at the outer level before it actually goes into the it is attracted by the nucleus right or it goes towards the k electron so that means you have to maximize the electron density okay so likelihood proportional to the number of electrons per kilogram of the material or the electron density what is uh, electron density you have uh, um uh, right number of atoms in a mole and then your z and then your weight in mole so you have uh no avogadro number right you have you have heard of avogadro number right number of atoms in a in a mole right and then you have your z so that tells you number of electrons in an atom you can get that and then you have your weight okay so with that you can have electron density so it is directly proportional to or the likelihood is related proportional to your electron density so probability of your compton event is 
directly proportional to your electron density. And uh, in this case, it is really, I mean, at least for, I mean, these are all, there are a lot of physics uh, that are there behind several aspects of this with respect to, for example, energy. But for the energy that is encountered in human interactions, right here for biomedical applications, in that range, it is found that relatively the f probability of Compton scattering, right, that is relatively independent of the incident photon energy. So, we do not have to worry. So, good news is that bad news is also that bad news is irrespective of the energy you are going to work, you are going to have Compton scattering. It is something that is not desired, right. So, you are going to have that irrespective of whichever energy you are using. At least photoelectric effect we can maximize. Oh, okay, if I put an the contrast agent, I can tune the energy so that it is the K and L, so I can maximize my signal. Whereas here, it does not depend on, on the energy and therefore, it is always going to be there. <laughs> okay. So, that is a downside. Yeah, the, oh, these are just the whatever I listed. Na is the Avogadro number, which is the atoms per mole. Z is the atomic number and then Wm is the weight in grams per mole. Okay. So, that is for your Compton scattering. So, let us uh, uh, kind of wrap up, right? We, we, we looked at the probability, we looked at what is signal, what, what is favorable, what is unfavorable, what should be maximized, what should be minimized. Uh, so, E d electron density is approximately for biological tissue, right? Approximately constant for all the material except for hydrogen, which is 6 into 10 power 26, rest of them are all 3 into 10 power 26. So, the essence is, right, you, you are going to have Compton scattering, um, it is independent of the material that you are going to see. Okay, to summarize. Compton scattering is equally likely in various materials and invariant of incident energy. So, you see, so you have to live up with the noise. I feel it is just noise. If you from, from a signal point of view, you might say it is noise, but actually, you are, if you really think through whatever physics we have covered, it is just not that. It is just unnecessarily you are dosing the patient, right? Because it is not your, it is not even coming out to help you, but then it is, you know, is there inside the body, it is exiting somewhere. So, it is actually a problem. So, photoelectric effect is more likely in high Z material and less likely in high incident energy. So, this kind of gives you, because intuitively what we may feel at least uh, without much thought, first, oh, you send more energy, maybe it will help, right? No, that is not going to happen because your signal is not going to, uh, number of photons should increase, but it should be in an energy where this maximum interaction can take place. That is key. So, do not get confused with the, the example that we did yesterday in the introduction, I said root, you know, signal to noise ratio, right, specifically. There we talked about square root of n. Then I said, oh, you can increase the uh, signal to noise ratio by sending in more photons more photon is different from energy of the photons. If you send higher energy, it does not help, right? So, it is not, that is what this means. So, overall Compton scattering uh, is dominant with higher incident energy in the same material. So, you see the disadvantage. So, if you have a, a higher energy that you are going to use, not only that you are minimizing the photoelectric effect, you also increase the uh, Compton scattering. Okay. And also, uh, what would be interesting to uh, compare is what is the percentage of interaction? So, if I send the energy in a given material, how much of it is Compton scattering? How much of the photons do um, uh, photoelectric effect? That is one way of looking at it. That is the number percentage of times that one is happening the other. The other way to look at it is interactions might be same, it might be, but amount of energy that is deposited, right, that is another issue. So, 
there is a table in uh, the text which is table 4.5 of uh, prints and links that and you will see there quickly that uh, the percentage of interaction is Compton scattering is more but the energy depositor right due to Compton scattering is less compared to the photoelectric effect. In fact, there is you look at it you will notice that even at 60% uh, of the interaction can be Compton scattering uh, uh, something like that right. But then uh, your amount of energy that is deposited, deposited will still your photoelectric effect will contribute to uh, significant uh, effect, uh, deposition. So, look at the table 4.5 that tells you that uh, it is probably straight uh, in some sense it is understandable. Compton scattering the uh, you will have many interactions, but the energy that is deposited in the tissue is less whereas in photoelectric effect because the principle of photoelectric effect is the energy is absorbed by the atom right it is come. So, naturally even though the number of interactions of photoelectric is less compared to Compton the energy that is deposited will be more in uh, photoelectric ok. So, we will stop that here we will now proceed further as to how do we now start to write the interaction we talked about loss in energy. So, how do we write the loss in energy, how do we write the fort in terms of photons and, and then attenuation all that. Uh, so, that we kind of get little more detail into this quantifying this interaction right. We know the effects next question is how do we uh, quantify that, how do we uh, describe that with some numbers some equations right. So, we will stop uh, here and we will continue from there next. Thank you.